Let's go to flow and pressure drop see what's going on. First of all, I've got the GPM now from scale one. What size pipe do I need? What is the velocity going on? What is the pressure drop? Well, this is the formula from ASHRAE and from research. This is the equation everybody used for friction. And we've taken that formula and basically just put it into the scale. Also, let's take a look at what ASHRAE says about pressure drops that would be appropriate for sizing pipe. This is a statement from Chapter 22, 2009, ASHRAE Fundamental Handbooks. Basically saying to you that a pressure drop between one and four feet per hundred feet of pipe, make sure you, make sure you don't miss that, per hundred feet of pipe is reasonable. And maybe a value of, of two and a half feet per hundred feet would kind of be the average they see most as honest going to. So now you have a, a friction loss that ASHRAE is saying is reasonable that you can use to size your pipe by. Now, 90.1-2010 has some additional information, but this is where we're going to start and we'll cover the rest of it in a few minutes. So how about velocity? Pretty straightforward equation, obviously, but you need to look at velocity because velocity has a lot to do with how you handle the air, and if you get velocities too high, your piping will seem to you will be noisy. So let's take a look. What would be considered high velocities and problems? Uh, here's 100 GPM. And we could have a one inch pipe at 37 feet per second. It's in red because uh, not only is that pipe going to be real, real clean, it's going to be real noisy. You're going to erode the pipe. It's ridiculous. You don't really want to do that. Two inch pipe is you see velocity came down. Three inch pipe we have in blue and four inch pipe in blue because we think those are reasonable velocities for pipe. Reasonable velocities that be quiet, it's okay. What's wrong with five inch pipe? Is the velocity is in the 1.6 feet per second. Is there anything wrong with that? Yes, it may not be able to move air. And we'll, we'll talk about that as we go. There's a minimal velocity required per ash rate to be able to move air around your system and get it to your roll air trolls and your air separators and get it under control. You don't want air popping out in places that you don't really want to have around. So what does that mean? Well, here's our publication in 1981 right out of Asher Transactions by this same engineer named Gil Carson. Did a little research, and there's two things you need to keep in mind in hydronics. If you try to take air and move it around in your system, you need to be conscious of the velocity. If you're trying to take air in a roll air troll or an air surfer and get air out of the water or a big old buffer tank, you need to be conscious of the velocity of the water to get rid of that air. Basically, a very simple chart that says, that if you want to get air separated with, from the water, slow it down to less than a half a foot per second. If you slow water down, velocity-wise, to less than a half a foot per second, then train air is going to pop out. Now, if it's an air separator, that's a great place to get it, a buffer tank. Now you pop it out where you want to. So you size your buffer tanks, your air separators, to slow it down to let the air pop out. Now suppose you want to go the other way and you train the air and move it over to the air separator. Then a very simple statement is you need to get it over two feet per second. Get it over two feet per second. I should actually have a down cover and have entrained air and bring it down if I keep velocity over two feet per second. Pretty neat tricks. Yes, there's a, a, a difference in a half a foot per second and two feet per second. What happens in there, nobody really understands. Nobody can guarantee the results. This is the two numbers you need to hang on to. You want to move air? Keep velocity over two feet per second. Now, we mentioned some changes in codes, and this ASHRAE 90.1-2010 thing is coming. It's not enforced everywhere, but it's coming. It will be. So right up front, what are the states already, what version of ASHRAE 90.1 are they on? This is a little website you can go to, and, and you can check your state. You can check where you are to see what ASHRAE version they're on. The point is, we want to point out to you what's coming. And what's coming is ASHRAE 90.1-2010. Guess what's in there that most people haven't seen yet? Pipe sizing. This is a prescriptive path pipe sizing for condenser water and chill water. Condenser water and chill water, they're giving you pipe sizes. Take a quick look, and they're giving you the hours of operation per year and giving you the maximum allowed flow in GPM through the pipe. I have never seen this done before, and most engineers are not even aware. 
So I'm just trying to make you aware. So going across the top of the, of the chart, you'll see 2000, less than 2,000 hours, right hand side over 4,400 hours, and that changes your pipe size, plus other is pretty much constant flow or durable flow. So now you've got another code coming on pipe sizing that you're going to have to meet when you size pipe. You have no choice. Uh, you will find this Windows-based version of the system sizer includes this in the pipe sizer. We're going to go through one in a few minutes, but real quick, take a look at this when you go to start looking at flow and pressure drop. You have a right-hand column there that says ASHRAE information. And what you've got to do is plug in how many hours a year that you're going to you think you're going to run your pump, which is right out of that table, and you've got to pick whether it's variable flow or other operation, and other operation is pretty much constant flow. Once you've done that, it will, it will not allow you to pick a pipe too small per ASH rate 90.1-2010. I think it's extremely important that you understand this. This will make you meeting the ASH rate codes easier, very easily done. Uh, Let's just take a couple of uh, quick examples on the flow and pressure drop piece of this, work our way through it a little bit so you make sure you have a little practice with it. So let's just go to problem number five. Nothing like having a little problem. Use the same data from problem number four. The pipe is still scheduled 40, assuming a total equivalent length of pipe of 2,500 feet. We want to make sure we understand what the cost section is for running this. What is the operating cost involved? And what is a suitable pipe diameter? What size pipe would you pick? And all this is going to come out of the system size. Remember the 2,500 feet of pipe would be the equivalent length of pipe. That would be the equivalent feet for the, for the T's, for the elbows, for everything. And that's going to be the friction loss will be based on that. So what pipe size would we use in this particular situation? A 500 GPM, 42 degree in, 12 degree delta T with a load of 3 million BTUs. Well, we go to our scale for flow and pressure drop. We plug in our ash rate. We said it's going to be more than 4,400 hours of operation per year. We said it's variable flow. All systems basically do have two-way valves now. And we are going to go with steel pipe. And by the way, you could be PVC pipe, copper pipe, or steel pipe. All that's in there. This is what's so fantastic about this. Plug in your GPM, which is 500 GPM. It actually is 499.84 from the previous screen because we corrected it for the water temperature. And we plug in 6-inch pipe, and 6-inch pipe turns out to be fine. It meets ASHRAE's recommendations. We're okay. Look over on the right-hand side of the gray screen on ASHRAE 90.1 for 6-inch pipe. The maximum allowable flow rate is 680 GPM. Do you see that? The maximum allowable flow a six inch pipe with over 4,400 hours of operation and variable flow is 680 GPM. So all the system size is telling you that 500 is less than 680, six inch pipe is fine. And we got a pipe pit. Isn't that amazing? You got your friction loss at 1.68 feet per hundred. So we know how many pressure drops are going to be per hundred feet of pipe. We have the velocity, 5.55 feet per second. You want Reynolds number? You got Reynolds number. You want feet per second, you've got it. You want metric, look at the bottom left-hand chart. You've got liters per minute, liters per hour, liters per second, cubic feet, and GPM. Wow. Now you've got all that information you've been looking for. Look at the little, look at the, you've got feet per second, meters per hundred meters. In other words, you want to go metric, English, English to metric. What quicker way are you going to find to do this? This is why you've got to have this. This is just beautiful. You've got to have it. Right-hand column, a little bit further down. You can plug in the hours of operation. In this case, we got 10 cents a kilowatt hour. We plugged in 2,500 feet as the total equivalent length of pipe. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes, but just an example. And if you're running 8,000, if you're running the year round, you can change the hours of operation. You have the operating costs. So you've got some way now to estimate the cost of running this system on this particular setup. So I think you see a six inch pipe is a good choice. And we went through this in detail, but I think you need to be doing that so you fully understand how this works. Well, let's just go back again and keep looking at some of these velocities and our pipe sizes. Why would ASHRAE be dictating to you 
the minimum allowable pipe size for this flow rate, whether you're running variable or constant. It's cost, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this chart again. ASHRAE max flow, estimated annual pumping cost. In other words, the smaller the pipe, the more friction loss, the higher the operating cost, the bigger the pump. That's simple. The bigger the pipe, the more the first cost is for the pipe, but the lower the operating cost. So ASHRAE is kind of taking a position in the middle here. So real simple, we pick six inch pipe. We said that was reasonable at five and a half feet per second. Max allowable ASHRAE flow rate 680 GPM. We got an estimated cost of 4,334 bucks per year. Look what happens when I cut the pipe from five to six. I doubled, double the operating cost. I'm going from six inch pipe to five. One pipe size reduction, I double the annual pumping cost. I think that's pretty dadgum important and the system size that will show you that if you're trying to calculate. How about length and pressure drop scales? How do we come up with a total pump head we need using the system size? Let's just go a little bit further. Again, look at this chart on the version 4 of the Windows version that you can go online from James M. Plus's company at our website, download it. It's a free one, no cost. I want you to take a look at this. And every engineer, every designer picking pumps needs this. You need this because it's becoming code. Yes, it's becoming code. Before we go to the code piece, let's take a look at this and get it in your head a little bit. This is a chart. This is a selection chart. You already select, selected the GPM. You already picked your pipe size. So after you pick your pipe size, which is what we just did, we picked the pipe size, we know the friction loss, now what? Now we've got to come up with the total pump head required from a pump. So here's how we do this. Next screen. You see I come in here and I feel that how many elbows do I have? How many T's do I have? How many gate valves? How many butterfly valves? What's the length of my pipe actual runs? Do I have a check valve? Do I have a triple duty valve? Do I have a chiller? In this case I'm showing a chiller. I have a heat exchanger. Do I have a balancing valve? Do I have a triple duty valve or suction infusion? All this is built into this table. And you can sit here and plug in each one of those numbers, which you need to be doing, and you'll wind up left-hand side total head loss required for your pump. What a beautiful way to calculate your pump. And what a simple way, because you can have those pressure drops in CVs, in PSI, or feet ahead. And it will automatically convert it back and forth for you so you don't get confused. And how many times do you sit down and you got your chillers and pressure drops and PSI, you got a valve all over here in feet, and you got to pull it all together to get your pump hit. You're going to have to do this. This is coming. What do I mean by that? A lot of people in this conference call have never seen this statement, and this is at an ASHRAE 90.1 2010 standard that DOE says is going to become energy code in every state of Nigeria. It's coming. Some states are there, some will be there shortly. What does it say new about pump head? Read it, please. It says the pump differential pressure head for the purpose of sizing pumps shall be determined. You can read in detail right quick, but it basically says you have to do a detailed pump head loss calculation with all the fittings, all the devices for the critical circuit, for the critical path. You've got to do that calculation and you've got to put it in the file. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have to do a pump head loss calculation in detail and put it in your job file. We've never been told that before. That is new. I think we need to be doing it anyhow, but no more guessing. No more just taking a stab at it. We've got to do the head loss calculation, and you have to put it in the file. What better way to do that than with the system size? We've got everything in it for you already. You can just go through it make a print screen and throw it in the file and you know what you did and why you did it. So what is meant by this critical head loss, this critical circuit? It's a simple little uh, direct return system. And if you had to do the pump head loss calculation on this piping diagram, where is the critical circuit? And I think very simple, you can see that zone number three, for some unknown reason, has a hundred foot of head drop at 500 GPM through that zone. And if that's the critical circuit that you've got to do this detailed pump head loss calculation in. In this case, it's just that simple. You have to recognize, as a designer, which loop is the critical loop, and you've got to do the head loss calculations 
and detail it out and put it in the file. That was basically showing you brake horsepower over 3,000 GPM, 130 foot ahead of efficiency. It's going to be 123 brake horsepower if you pump this direct as shown. Now, real quick, if you would look at primary and secondary in this situation, you could do it this way. You put a couple of bridges down at the end. Now the critical circuit, it changes. I've isolated a 100 foot head circuit. Uh, yes, I have more additional pumps, and here's all my pumps at the bottom. But now my actual pumping brake horsepower dropped from 123 to 79 by going to primary and secondary. You're beginning to see why ASHRAE wants you to take the time to look at systems and pumping and pump at loss calculations. This is a huge amount of savings. Just by taking the time to analyze the circuits, do detailed pump head loss calculations, and understand where the head is. This is a must. You're going to be in this business. You're going to have to begin to look at your systems. Detailed pump head loss calculation by ASHRAE, by code, and it's the right thing to do. Running pumps cost money. We want the best designs we can get and the, least, and, and the most efficient systems we can get. So you kind of see the difference in the savings there from 123 down to 79. It's pretty huge just by the way we decide to pipe the system. Let's look at the pump head loss calculations on a typical cooling tower. And let's plug this into our system sizer to see how this works because it really does do a nice, nice job. And I want you very comfortable with this. So slow down just a second and get this system in your head. Open system, cooling tower. The, the, the design is for 250 GPM with 4-inch pipe. In other words, we've already gone to the friction loss charts. We plugged in 250 GPM. We met the ASHRAE codes with this, and we, and we come up with 4-inch pipe. So we start there. So we're coming into this detailed head loss calculation chart or into that part of the system sizer already with my pipe size to 4 inches at 250 GPM. Next thing. This is a series counterflow tower. I've got pressure nozzles. And pressure nozzles, in this case, take seven pounds of pressure on the spray nozzle to make this spray. Crossflow towers, you don't have this number. So the series counterflow towers and crossflow towers are different. In this case, I've got to put the spray nozzle pressure into my pump head. Vertical distance between, this, is a, this has a lift. This is a cooling tower open system, cold water deck, to the spray nozzles is eight feet. I've got four regular 90 degree elbows. It's a very simple basic system. Keep it real simple so you can see it. I've got a four inch gate valve on the inlet and outlet of the cooling tower. You see the gate valve shown where I can isolate the towers. The pump includes an EE-3 suction diffusion, no startup strainer, and a four inch triple D valve. The total circuit piping length is 28 feet of 4-inch pipe. I have a plate heat exchanger there. My plate heat exchanger has a pressure drop of 10 pounds. And my leaving cooling tower water is 85 degrees. Entering at 95, coming back at 85. So what am I pumping? I'm pumping 85 degree water. Now, I want you to do a detailed pump head loss calculation. If you're bored with this, I'm sorry. The code is going to make you do this. That's the message I'm trying to give you. You've got to start doing this. We haven't been taking this much time and picking the pump for the critical circuits. We have to now. By code, you're going to have to do this and put it in your file. It's that critical because of the energy involved in running a pump. And we want to make sure we do the right estimate. So let's take this information. Let's go to our scale. Let's go to our system size. Let's see how it can help us. First thing we want to do is we're going to correct that water temperature. We said 85 to 95, so we go to the menu where we have fluid property. We could leave it at 60, but let's go ahead and correct it to the average water temperature. 85, 95, average is 90 degrees. So we got water, fluid temperature is 90. We've got to correct it to 90 for average temperature. Let's go pick a pipe. Now I said we've already done that. We've already been to the, to the flow pressure drop chart to come up with 4 inch pipe at 250 GPM, and we're using steel pipe. This could be PVC here. That's how flexible the system sizer is. You want to run PVC pipe to your cooling towers? Fine. It's already in here for you. This is steel pipe. You see the pressure drops 3.33 feet per 100 feet of pipe. You see the velocity is 6.3 feet per second. And you see this is based on Schedule 40 steel pipe. And that's what we're using. It's beautiful. We've got all that plugged in now. Let's go to our 
length pressure drop setup, let's go to that screen of a windows based system sizer. How are we going to get our total pump head, which by standard 90.1-2010, by code, we are going to have to do. How are we going to do that? Well, that's just the next chart, and then when you start, the GPM and pipe size flows right in. Remember, we had 3.33 feet per 100 feet of pipe and 4 inch pipe. Remember that? And all that's happened now is it remembers that. It remembers the friction loss is 3.33 feet per 100 feet because we picked 4 inch pipe. Remember, it's been corrected for the fluid we're pumping, which happens to be water at 90 degrees. Could be glycol, could be anything. And now we're getting ready to calculate where that black area is the total pump head loss required. So go to the right and just make sure a couple more tricks for you. You see where it's help with the total equivalent length, help with the TEL box? Click that if you want to do a detailed head loss calculation. If you don't click it, this window will not show up. If you want help in calculating the, the equivalent pressure drop of an elbow and, and, and T's and triple duty valves, then you click that little help with the TEL button that just pops up. Remember the pipe run was 28 feet. Remember we had four regular 90 degree elbows. Remember we had two gate valves. Under the pipe entrance, we're going to say we got a sharp edge. Under the pipe entrance, we're going to say we got a sharp exit. You could say yes or no. You could change that. It's not a huge number, but if you have a sudden increase or decrease or sharp edge, check it. That's going to, this is going to be detailed. It's going to be a good, accurate head loss calculation. On the left-hand side on the bottom, it says heat exchanger. It says example one, you can write in there what it is. In other words, you just highlight that, write in heat exchanger, put in 10 pounds, check pounds, and it'll take care of the conversion for you. We said the, the lift between the cold water deck of the tower to the spray nozzles was 8 feet. So again, type in total static head was 8 feet and check feet. We said we had discharge nozzles or spray nozzles that had a minimum requirement of seven pounds. Put in seven and check pounds. You see, you, you plug in you plug in pounds and feet, mixing them up, it will correct it for you. Isn't it beautiful? Coming on the right hand side, we had a four inch triple duty valve. We just plug it in. It already knows what the pressure drop is of the balance glass that triple duty valve. It also has suction fuses. We just pick the EE-3 suction fuse. We plug it in. And now I think you begin to see we've got everything detailed out in that piping system for a total pump head calculation. We got every nut and bolt listed. Everything in that loop, that critical loop has been listed. And look over to the left hand side where the black area is. It has calculated the total pipe length equivalent of 1,576 feet. It's using that 3.33 feet per 100 we got from the previous scale. And you got your pump head. You need 53 feet of pump head to make the system work. Print screen, throw up your file, you met the ASHRAE 90.1 2010 code. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, you need to get this and practice with it. I cannot think of a better way to spend your time, and you're going to have to do this. This is one of the most useful tools you're ever going to find anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate your time. Remember, this windows based version. Of the, NP, uh, of the system size and the little iPhone versions are online and they're free. For you old guys like me, and I'm an old guy with gray hair, I do like that manual system size. The limitation of the manual system size is it's only good to 12 inch pipe. Another limitation it has nothing to do with NPSH on it. So I would strongly recommend you guys get the Windows based, based versions and you spend some time with this. You cannot find a more important tool for every engineer, every contractor, every young person coming this industry to learn. You need this desperately. Have a great day. Thank you for your time.